What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on the channel. This is a video that I've been waiting to do for uh, quite a long time, a video that I've gotten tons and tons of questions on over the last two or three months here. But in this video, we're finally gonna go over uh, my full review on the LVS 34 transducer for Panoptics Live Scope, as well as my favorite settings that I've learned so far, which in my opinion, uh, for the waters that I fish are the absolute best ones. If you guys are new here, which I'm sure uh, judging by the video title, a lot of you guys will be new here please subscribe to this channel i'm a full-time fishing guide here in the northeast part of kansas but in my spare time i do a lot of videos for garmin uh revolving around tutorials settings uh tips and tricks and stuff like that so if you guys are new here please hit the subscribe button but like i said before this is a video that i've kind of held off doing um i did get the lvs 34 transducer some time ago but i've waited on doing a full review as well as my settings and whatnot because i just wanted to wrap my head around what all they did different um you know all the hype was built up around the better target separation better resolution all this and that so before giving my full review i wanted to give it you know at least like 30 to 60 days of running it on the boat every day make sure that i number one also knew what i was talking about as it pertains to the new transducer and stuff too so yeah that's why this is uh definitely taking some time for me to put together so i'm looking forward to sharing all this stuff with you guys so um let's try and get up in the front of the boat here i'm going to turn the active captain helm feature on show you guys what i'm looking at on the screen and go over just all the differences that i've noticed here over the last two months running the new lvs 34. So just like I said in the beginning of the video with the LVS 34, the biggest things that uh, Garmin preached were better target separation, better resolution, better clarity. And those are all things that uh, that I have noticed with this. But the one thing that I see a lot on the uh, Garmin Fishing Electronics group or the, uh, the LiveScope Q&A group on Facebook is that everyone thinks that when Garmin puts out an update, it ruins everything. The one thing that you have to realize uh, with the LVS 34, as well as the updates that come out with Garmin, those updates are meant to supplement um, what you're working with at that current moment. So for example, when the color limit update came out, that was right around the LVS 34 release date. And that update was meant to supplement the LVS 34 as well as different color palettes, all the different settings. Basically what I'm trying to say is that when an update comes out with something brand new, you have to adjust different settings. It's not an end all be all update. Just like this transducer, the LVS 34 is not an end all be all best out there transducer. There's probably gonna be more coming out. But in my opinion, I would say that the LVS 34 is like, 30 to 35 percent better than the lvs 32 based on what i've seen so far there's a couple other videos out on youtube right now um, with the lvs 34 explanation and settings and whatnot so i'm going to kind of echo some of what i've heard in those because it kind of reflects what i feel as well so if you guys have seen any of those videos and it sounds the same it's probably because that's where i got it from but there are a lot of people out there that have had the lvs 34 longer than i have and were able to uh, get those settings dialed in kind of get the full swing of things um, and then put out a video before i'm able to but that's why we're here today so just real quick to go over what I'm running in my boat. So at the console back here, I run an Echo Map Ultra 126 as well as a 106. And then in the front here, I've got a dedicated live scope unit, the uh, GPS map 1243 XSV. And then below it, I have another 106 SV. All the Echo Maps talk to each other. They're all networked, so they all share waypoints as well as the GT56 transducer in the back of the boat. And I run the 1243 XSV as a dedicated live scope unit number one, because it is one of the Mac Daddy best live scope units that you can buy. But I can also uh, screen record um, via the helm feature on Active Captain uh, for all my video content. But the reason that I bring up exactly what units I'm using, especially my live scope unit, is because the screen resolution and clarity is going to be dictated by what unit you have. And that's a whole other conversation as far as what units are better. I mean, get whatever you can afford. The 93 SV was the great starter unit. The ultras are amazing. The screen clarity on those is great. Good price point, especially when they go on sale with Bass Pro and Cabells and whatnot. But if you can opt for a GPS map like 1243 or an 8610 or something like that, obviously go that route because your picture is going to be absolutely incredible so with that being said i'm going to kind of get on the trolling motor here and uh, just kind of move around we're just kind of in a big timber field right now so i'll have a lot of targets i've already seen quite a few crappies and carp swimming around so i'll have a lot to show you um so that's what i'm going to do all right well let's just get phone out and start recording you guys can see right now we're shooting out 60 feet which is uh especially on the lvs 34 something i've noticed right off the bat 
is that your resolution far out anywhere from like 60 to 100 feet is amazing. Whereas before with the 32, depending on the depth that you're in and depending on the settings that you're running, you may encounter, you know, anywhere past 60 or 70 feet, you're not getting the greatest returns. So that's something right off the bat that I've noticed. Um, so 60 feet is something I feel comfortable with just kind of maneuvering around trying to find fish. And then when I find the target that I'm looking for. So yeah, they're right about 40 feet. You guys can see that kind of cluster of trees back behind me here. That one's got a couple fish in it. They're kind of hiding back between those trees right there, right about 45 feet. You can see those big or those big suns. It's kind of what I call big crappies sitting in the trees. They just like little look like little glowing suns. We've got a little school of them right there at 25 feet too. So one thing too, I always recommend do not set your depth to uh, auto range, just manually set that. You'll get a lot better picture with a lot less screen jumping around. So right there at 25 feet, you can see that big crappie sitting off the back side of the tree right there. So I'll, that's uh, still 20 some feet out. So I'll dial that screen back to 40 and you'll get a much better picture. But yeah, that big one's still sitting right there. I'm off the trolling motor so I don't spook them because we have zero wind out here today. So I would not be surprised if these fish are super spooky. But I think uh, right up next to, you know, the increased detail at long ranges, the other really nice thing that I've noticed, especially with the settings that I've been playing around with, which will be a lot different from my previous live scope videos, is you get a much better 3D depth of field based on where those fish are sitting on the structure. So as where before, if you turned your trolling motor, your live scope pole left or right, that fish would disappear right away. But if you're running the correct color scheme, which a lot of these new color schemes that came out a couple months ago with the new update show a lot more depth of field. They have a lot more shadows, a lot more contrast to the picture. So as you guys can see me kind of panning around right here, we're just getting a different view on all those. So I could say, you know, that crappie's sitting on one side of the tree or the other. Um, if he's trying to hide on the front side of it, the back side, the left or right. So that right off the bat is definitely something um, that I've noticed, which is why I think the LVS 34 is much better than the 32. So now that we're kind of sitting on this tree right here, just back behind me, let's dial that range down to 20 feet. Don't want to go quite 15. You, I, I, one thing that I will say that I see a lot of guys doing is on the forward range. Sometimes they're oftentimes setting that to like 10 or 15 feet. I think your best definition is going to come from anywhere from 20 to 30 feet if you're trying to go that close. I'd say that if you're going to use, uh, if you want something super close like that, like if you're right over the top of a brush pile, switch your transducer one click to the down view mode instead of the forward view. I think that's going to give you better resolution as well. Okay, so as we're kind of snaking our way through these trees here, right away at four feet out, you guys can see that fish right there. That kind of looks like a crappie. It almost looked like a carp at first, which now I'm kind of hitting it from the side and that fish is getting a different profile. He's swimming away from us. Kind of looks a little bit more like a carp. But as we get into this tree right here, you can see super good definition on that big crappie sitting right in the middle of that tree. I do have a rod. I'm not going to catch them. We're just going to look at them for right now. But that is a big one sitting. There might actually be two of them. See? Oh yeah, there's two of them. There's two nice ones right there. Just almost right below us. Looks really good. I like those. That's what you want to see. So now we're just going to kind of keep maneuvering around. Um, we're getting going to get into a little bit shallower water so I can kind of show you the shallower water definition as well. And then from there, we're going to go over the settings. All right. So now we've slid into a little bit shallower water. It's a little bit deeper in this pocket than I remember. And that's because the lake's pretty high right now. As you guys can see, we're shooting 80 feet out. I've got the bluff wall kind of back behind us right here. And you guys can see that on the screen right here, just right around 65 feet. That's almost dead accurate right there. But you can see I've got no dead spots. Um, there's only one little stitch uh, right on the bottom, which is gonna be pretty common with the LVS 34. You may see a stitch, but I don't see it too often, especially if you just adjust your depth like that, bring it down to 10 feet. You can micro adjust it too. It obviously goes in five foot increments when you use the plus and minus on the on-screen controls, but got no dead spots um, right around 20, 30 feet. There's a couple crappies hanging out in a little group right there. Looks pretty good. Scan it up shallower in the pocket here, about 70 feet. That's where it starts to get really shallow sitting in nine foot, but otherwise things look, uh, they look pretty good for, um, for the settings that I've got on that. And that's exactly why we're gonna go over the settings here. I just wanted to be able to show you guys 
uh, definition of the LVS 34 in deeper water, uh, which we weren't even in really that deep of water. We might do a couple more shots in deep water, but it looks just as good, I promise. But then again, sliding up into shallower water here and uh, just being able to see all the way up to the bank right up until it uh, breaks water to see good definition. All right, so with settings, the one thing that I know everyone in the live scope, Garmin, electronics world in general has become obsessed with is getting the most clear picture possible. And I'll admit that's one thing that I was definitely obsessed with when I first got live scope was getting the clearest picture possible. Didn't care about anything else. I just wanted, you know, the water calm to be completely black, no interference, no nothing. But over time, uh, in the last three or four years here that I've been using live scope, and especially now with the LVS 34, that I've realized is that I want as much information coming back from the transducer as possible. Sometimes, most times, that means sacrificing a little bit of quality uh, as far as interference in your picture. But that being said, the new color limit update that was released, you know, two, three months ago or whatever it was back in February, that was released to help eliminate a lot of the interference without sacrificing picture quality. So that being said, with my settings here, after running the LVS 34 for the last couple months, I have dialed that back just a little bit to be able to get as much information coming back from the transducer as possible, uh, quickest response time, while also dialing my settings in to get a very clear picture for what we've got. So now let's jump back to the GPS map screen and I'll show you guys in real time here what my settings are and why I run them. So we're shooting 40 feet out to begin. Uh, we're just looking at some deep trees here sitting in 16 and a half foot of water. So I'm just gonna go to my options. We'll start right off the bat. I've got my gain at 70%. Depth range is manually set to 20. Forward range, like I said before, is at 40. Now we'll go to sonar setup and we'll start with appearance. So the one thing like I was talking about earlier as far as color schemes go, the Moss color scheme for the LVS 34 with the new updates is what I found to be the best color scheme to get the most amount of detail, contrast, shadows, uh, kind of get more of a 3D picture of what's going on down there. So if you guys haven't tried the Moss or Black Emerald color scheme out, I highly recommend it. But Moss, this one right here was released with uh, one of the newer updates at the beginning of this year. And that's the one that I've been running with the uh, with the 34. So color gain, uh, color gain is something that I preached a lot when I first got live scope uh, for a lot of guys that have trouble seeing their super tiny jigs. Color gain just kind of brightens up your targets and whatnot. I've kind of dialed that back as you guys can see to 56%. So if we crank that color gain all the way up, you can kind of see how that changes the picture. See how it brightens everything up. I mean, it's just a real, I kind of like that you're getting a lot of information back um, but at the same time it just makes things a little bit too busy so i'm running mine at 56 percent so start with that now we'll go back now color limit this is the big one right here and this is something that i also did a video on when it first came out but my settings have since changed so right now i'm running my color limit at 34 percent sometimes i'll run that color limit anywhere from 40 to 60%, but it all depends on your water conditions. It all depends on the water clarity. And that's something that I also cannot preach enough is that your settings will not be the end all be all on any given day. Here in Kansas, the reservoirs fluctuate a lot with the water clarity, water coming up, going down, getting clear, getting dirty. So that's something that I adjust on a daily basis, depending on the picture that I want. So that being said, if you guys are not aware of the color limit feature, let's uh, bump that all the way up. You guys can see how much definition we're losing. Yes, it will clear your picture up a lot, but at the same time, you are sacrificing a lot of information coming back from the transducer. So, like I said, anywhere from kind of 40 to uh, 50 to maybe 60%, depending on water clarity, but I've got mine set at 35. So now we'll go back and we'll go down to trails. I don't use the trails feature, bottom fill. Turn that on, you guys can see what that does. Uh, definitely not for me, not something I've ever used or probably will use. So then we'll go back. Now let's go down to layout. Um, I have the grid overlay off. If we turn it on here, you guys can see it just gives you kind of a better frame of reference for uh, size of fish when you're scanning forward. But I always leave that off because I just don't prefer it. Scroll history, I hide. On screen control, obviously we leave that on. Reverse range, I always leave that on minimum. If you guys start with the hide, 
your zero is gonna be right at either your uh, trolling motor or your pole, wherever your live scope transducer is mounted. You're not gonna get any information back behind the boat. I like to get a little bit of information back behind the boat, but not a ton, because I don't wanna sacrifice screen real estate. So I leave that on minimum. And that all depends on what depth you're in as well, because if we change that to default, you get a lot more. And then if you go to full, you get a whole lot more, but see you're missing that kind of first third of the screen or first quarter of the screen right there. So that's why I choose to leave that on minimum. So I get a little bit, but not the whole thing. And then we'll go back, sonar setup, uh, noise reject. This has always been one that I've always left on high, but like I keep talking about getting information back from the transducer. Look what happens if we turn that on high you get just almost kind of like a little bit of lag. It does give you a really clear picture. So definitely leave that on high if it works for you. But if we kind of go noise reject off, you know, it's kind of like almost like a, like a, like a fuzzy TV effect. So I kind of variate between off and low, just depending on the water clarity. Ghost reject, uh, I either variate between low or off, or I'm sorry, low or auto, um, because I have noticed that with the new settings that I've been running, if I'm on a hard bottom situation, especially in shallow water, that ghost tree is gonna be extremely vibrant. So that's when I'll switch it on to low, and that will get rid of the ghost tree, but you won't sacrifice any other settings. So I recommend leaving that on low or um, or off, just depending on your uh, the bottom that you're on. Now, TVG, this is another one too, um, time varying gain. I have mine set to off right now. Um, if we change that to high, you guys can see what TVG does is just eliminate more interference kind of on a columnal situation, like from top to the middle of the screen. Whenever I used to run that a little bit higher, I noticed that I wasn't able to see my jig when it was first going down, but it would show up right after that kind of line where that, uh, where the time varying gain stopped. So again, we're sacrificing a little bit of picture quality to get more information back from the transducer. So that's why I usually leave mine off. The water clarity is decent enough. It's kind of stained, but it's not too bad to where I can just leave that off. But again, it all depends on your water conditions and your clarity and whatnot. So please, that's definitely something to play with. And then from there, installation, um, I don't use AHRS because I don't have my transducer on the trolling motor. Don't need to calibrate my compass because it's on the pole. Orientation is set to forward. I never change that to the down setting. I always have it on forward, so I don't have it on auto either. And then focus is on auto fresh. So those are all my settings that I run with the LVS 34 transducer. I will put those down in the description or a pinned comment on this video. Um, I'll also pop them up here on the screen right now. So if you guys are watching, you can write those down and then maybe go start with that and just kind of see what the settings do. But please just remember, it's not a one size fits all situation. I know for a lot of the guys in Kansas that watch my videos, um, that might be a really good starting point because we probably all fish the same lakes or at least the same reservoirs that kind of look the same as far as clarity goes. But again, these settings are a lot different than what I used to run um, with the LVS 32, just because I kind of got out of my own comfort zone and realized that when you play with every single setting on a daily basis, you're gonna get a much better picture and then you're gonna be comfortable with playing with those settings as well. Whew, okay. I know it's not everyone's favorite video to watch uh, when I sit here and talk, but this is a video that I've been putting off for some time, even here in the last couple weeks, because I just hate not fishing, but getting my full review and especially my settings out for the LVS 34 was a very important one that I've been meaning to do for a bit here. So that's why we're doing this. I hope everyone skipped around as necessary if they didn't want to listen to me talk. But I guess uh, if we have to answer the question, is the LVS 34 worth it? Yes, in my opinion, I fish every single day, 300 plus days a year. Uh, the LVS 34 is a new tool in my tool belt that I will utilize on a daily basis. And I feel like the clarity is a lot better. I can see my baits out a lot farther. I can see fish and structure out a lot farther, especially like I said before, having gotten out of my comfort zone to play with the settings a lot more and know how to get more information back from the transducer and play with the settings to make my screen as clear as possible. Definitely, definitely. If you guys have the 32 and you're comfortable with it, I highly recommend upgrading to the uh, 34. You will have no problem getting rid of your 32 to compensate for some of that extra money that you might spend. If you guys are just getting into live scope, if you have the opportunity to get into a used live scope system, please by all means start with the LVS 32 or if you have the money and you want to spend it, 
absolutely buy the 34 because again, here in the next couple of years, we're probably gonna see another transducer upgrade. That's just the way technology works. But I cannot stress enough, please just update your units. Garmin releases these maintenance and service updates for a reason, and it's only to help you. It's not to screw you like everybody thinks in the Garmin Facebook groups. Keep your units up to date, learn what the updates do, and I promise you it will only benefit, benefit you in the long run. So that is all I have for you guys today. All the links are gonna be in the description for all the units that I use. Uh, the Sea Light pole, I've been partnered up with Sea Light here for the last year or so. Best pole on the market if you guys do not wanna put your uh, transducer on your trolling motor. I personally have it on a pole. It's a lot easier for me to guide with two people on the front and be able to have control over the pole versus my trolling motor when I'm guiding. I know it's not for everybody. It all just depends on how you fish, but that's what I prefer. But if you guys are in the market for the best pole out there to put your transducer on, please go check out Sea Light. I also have a discount code uh, with the link down in the description below. Also, if you guys need a uh, graph mount for your live scope setup to put your graph on in the front, stowaway mounts, again, absolute best mount out there. I helped prototype this mount over a year ago. I've got the double stack mount on there too. If you guys have two graphs, uh, it's just an accessory you add right on. They've got two different sizes. American made, uh, made right out here in Lee Summit, Missouri in the area. Super awesome guys to work with. So please go check them out if you guys are in the market for something besides a RAM mount. You wanna elevate that screen up to your level. Like I said, they have two sizes. I have the regular size on this one. I can telescope that up to like three feet, but they have an XL version that goes even higher don't want to turn this all into a sales pitch just trying to explain what I use but all those links are in the description down below if you guys have questions comments concerns whatever about the LVS 34 about my settings about whatever please leave a comment down below if you got if you guys are on the channel for the first time please go subscribe because I try and do a lot of Garmin tutorial videos as much as I can so again thank you guys for coming to my Garmin TED talk uh, I hope that was not too much talking these videos are very few and far between where I'm not out here catching fish and filming it but again this one was very important to me to put out for you guys so thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you on the next video